Hey, how's it going? How are you uh, doing? My West Coast partner in crime, Big Club. This is yes, Ashton yes. Ash Ledette. He runs so many things back of house um, at our West Coast flagship in Los Angeles. He is many incredible things from musician, musical producer, incredible friend, incredible teammate. He knows everything about keeping our cookies and cakes and pies and soft serve safe, delicious, well-packed, well-counted, and ready to go so that when you show up looking for your fix, our stuff is really nice and neat and together. Um, I fell in love with this guy on opening, I mean, I don't even know that it was opening day, but I remember standing in the back of the Melrose Kitchen with you, just yeah. packing slices of cake and talking about food. And I don't, Lord knows what time it was. It was early in the morning or it was late at night, but I was like, this one, this one's a soulmate. <laughs> we uh, clicked, we clicked right, right away. Big club. I know, this is great. It's such a great feeling. It's so awesome to be a part of this. Uh, okay, so awesome. Ash, you are gonna teach us something today. What are you teaching us? Yes, I am teaching you my awesome kick and chicken recipe. Okay, big oh. club, author's note. Uh, one of the first things that we started talking about when we were packing all of our cakes and stuff was years ago was that Ash had been chasing down this, like his version of a hot chicken sandwich recipe for Lord knows how long. And I was like, well, what do you do? Like, what is your day off? And what do you do on your day off? This is a common question you ask someone when you're, that you see at work all the time, because you see them at work and you only know them through work. He was like, well, I'm perfecting this recipe. And so when I have a day off, every time I have a day off, I go back to the recipe and I tinker and I tinker and I tinker. And I have been begging this guy to make this recipe. He, you've made it for family meal at Milk Bar yeah. Flagship in LA before, but I've never been there when you've made it. I know, I know, unfortunately. But today's but the day. Today's the day. And you're not just sharing it with me, you're sharing it with all of Bake Club, with the wild, wonderful worlds of spirits that make up Bake Club. And what's amazing about this is now that we have the recipe here, now the Bake Club can make it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Whatever day they're in the mood for some cake and chicken, right? Any day, every day. Absolutely. Okay, how long have you been working on this recipe? I've been working on this recipe. It's about three years in the making. I mean, that's right, because we celebrate, uh, we celebrate our third birthday, Milk Bar Melrose, in just a few days. So that it's makes coming sense. Up. It's coming three up. Three years in the making. Okay, I know that we have some like prep work to do to get going, and I have a lot of questions about the recipe, but yep. let's get, you start telling me what to do, start teaching me, and then I will pepper in all of the things that I'm wondering at the same time. Okay, all right, well, first thing, we got, we got to get our chicken ready to go. So okay. we got to butterfly it, and uh, we, we got to get it ready. Uh, uh, thighs, wings, what do we got? I got a chicken breast here. It's nice. It's juicy. And it's something about the breast that lets you know just when it's done. Got it. Oh, that's nice. Can you use another cut of chicken? Uh, thighs work also, but you want to just have a nice tender piece. Whatever you can cut a nice tender piece of. That makes sense in a sandwich. Okay, got it. And we're going to butterfly it, which means we're kind of going to like it's almost like slicing the chicken breast in half on the um, on the bias, but you take it all the way to the edge, but you don't go all the way through. Not all the way through, absolutely. Exactly. And this is how you're going to get uh, multiple sandwiches out of just one breast, which you know is great when you're cooking at home, um, maybe for a large group like me when I'm cooking for fam. You know, I have to uh, butterfly and. And I think that it also makes sense, you know, when you're spreading it across, so you're gonna get a nice piece that makes sense in your sandwich. This is my like, it's like I'm opening the paper to read it. Yep. <laughs> or this, in other Absolutely. words. Okay, how many people are you feeding when you make kick and chicken, when you make Ash's kick and chicken for family meal? Oh, uh, so for family meal, I'm usually making for about 20. We scaled it back, obviously, <laughs> because nobody's cooking for 20 at home. But um, this recipe is going to feed six very hungry people just well. 
Got it. And so it's, we're rocking four chicken breasts in this recipe. Four chicken breasts in this recipe here. I love it. And so basically any cut of chicken, as long as, as long as it can be sort of juicy and tender, like you said, works. And I imagine it's the same sort of thing of you need, you're going to do whatever you need to do to sort of cut it down to that nice butterfly size. Absolutely. And then give it a nice slice so that, you know, you got a nice sandwich size piece. Okay. Got uh, it. Yep. You don't want it to be too overwhelming of a bite, right? Got it. So it's all in service of, you're thinking the whole time, chicken Sammy, chicken Sammy, chicken Sammy. All the way. And if you have a really big um, chicken breast, like this one is a giant chicken breast, I can sort of figure out whether I want to go half. Give piece. it a half. That, I mean, that looks like about three. I'd make about three sandwiches out of that breast there. This is a lot. This is a lot of chicken. It's a lot of chicken. Absolutely. Oh, I like that. Thank you for giving me permission to do the cut down. I think that's probably important. Okay, got it. Okay, so I have my, my chicken breast, they're butterflied. Yep. What happens next? Uh, well, you just have a little bit of raw meat, so give your hands a wash. Yeah. Look, guys, come on, don't be ridiculous. This guy runs <laughs> the back of house at the Miller's Kitchen, obviously. So More food safety is always number one. <laughs> now uh, we got to get our marinade going. Okay. Talk to me. What's in the marinade? All right. We're going to take our buttermilk. We're going to take our, our Frank's hot sauce. And we're going to whip that up with some pickle juice and crack our eggs in there as well. Okay. Um, so talk to me. Why all these different ingredients? Now, it's got to get sticky. That buttermilk and that egg is what's going to get it nice and sticky. That frank hot sauce is going to get into that chicken and give it that nice little kick um, through the bite. Because we don't just want to season it hot. We want you to have a nice chicken bite, right? I love it. Okay, so marinade is one cup of buttermilk? It's a cup of buttermilk. Got it. And... Uh, I got a fourth cup of the pickle juice. A quarter cup of pickle juice. Also, Bake Lab, you know we do this every time we bake a cake. If you don't have buttermilk, you know how to show up with whole milk, 2% skim milk, and a splash of vinegar. A vinegar. You, let it sit. you know how to do that. Okay, a quarter cup of pickle juice. This is my favorite yep. ingredient. And this pickle juice, like, it tenderizes the chicken and it seasons it at the same time. And it seasons, absolutely. And it helps that uh, hot sauce get in there. I mean, they just hang out with each other. This is like, pickle juice is like the secret to many a great marinade that most home cooks and chefs alike will not share you on. Because you think about what's in pickle juice, right? It's spices, it's sugar, it's pepper, it's vinegar, like that acid really really tenderizes, penetrates, and to your point, it like opens the door for the hot sauce. Absolutely, for that Frank's Red Hot. Okay, how much Frank's Red am I, am I popping in? You're gonna do a half a cup. Okay, half a cup. So one cup buttermilk, a quarter cup pickle juice, and a half a cup Frank's Red Hot. Do you have a pickle juice that you prefer? Uh, it really just depends on what pickles I, I have. I don't really have a preference, but my girlfriend is in love with pickles, so I always have them at the house. <laughs> I, love that. I, I also live with a pickle monster. I have, I have jars that have no pickles in them, just pickle juice, because he also loves the pickle juice so much. I'm like, it's time to get rid of one of these jars, and he just like, he's worried, Ash, every time that we're going to run yeah. out. Hey, it, it, it can happen. Okay, Christina. <laughs> um, okay, how many eggs are, are going into this lovely mixture? The three three eggs. large eggs that you just commonly have at home. Three will do. Um, we're only doing four sandwiches. So, obviously, um, if you were doing more chicken, just throw in double the eggs, double everything, and you'll be okay. Got it. And this, this, like, this mixture already, it smells pretty magical. Uh, it's kicking, right? It's kicking. It's kicking. <laughs> I 
I'm very excited. Like there's something about the acidity of the buttermilk, like the 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 um the dairy, the richness from the buttermilk, and then your nose picks up on the acidity from the pickle juice and from the um, Frank's hot in a way that you're like, what, the second you smell it, you're like, oh, it's on, it's happening. Oh, yeah. right absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it could be intimidating, but I promise you, it is not an overpowering heat. That is why we perfect the recipe. Three years, y'all, don't even mess around. What was the last thing you did consistently for three years that you cared about? This man is giving I, us three years <laughs> of his life in a recipe, okay? I wish it was the gym. You wish <laughs> I wish it was the gym, but oh, you want to know what? It's not. It's kicking chicken. It wasn't. It was kicking chicken. <laughs> okay, and now there's also some dried spices seasonings in this in this marinade, right? Yes. So we're going to take we have a, a, like our cayenne pepper. This is kind of the master spices that we're doing. So once we throw this all together, we're using this multiple <laughs> times throughout the recipe. Okay, so we're making like a master spice blend for kick and chicken, but we're gonna use it in more than one place. Absolutely. Okay, talk me through it. Okay, um, grab your cayenne pepper, we'll, we'll do, uh, three tablespoons of the cayenne. Three tablespoons? Three tablespoons. Oh yeah, kick it. Y'all, he needs <laughs> business. Okay, got it. Uh, I do a tablespoon of brown sugar. Tablespoon of brown sugar. Do you have a preference, a light brown versus dark brown? I like the light brown, quite honestly. Me too, what is it about dark brown sugar? It's like if you're making ginger snaps, fine, but otherwise. Otherwise, yeah, I'm, I'm more into the light brown. Okay, so three tablespoons cayenne, one tablespoon light brown. Yep, and then we'll grab our teaspoon. Okay. We'll do a teaspoon of chili powder. Okay. Teaspoon of the garlic powder. <laughs> like that for depth okay and if you have paprika some people don't have paprika, I got paprika. but we got the, i know you have the paprika let's do a <laughs> teaspoon of that also. i gotta follow your recipe and one teaspoon of paprika and that's to kind of give like that's more of like a less spicy it gives you like that earthy guttural pepper note right feel right exactly and that's kind of what i use to mild out that that heat oh interesting if that's the balancing effect that we'll start to find yeah yeah that's where that's where it kind of came in all right what else goes into this magical little bowl two tablespoons of seasoning salt i like to use lowry's tell me why yeah. lowry's Lowry's is just the best. I couldn't even tell you. My mom used it. My grandma used it. I have to say, it's just like a thing in your family. It's just, the, yeah. What is in here? Magic. Salt, sugar, spices is what it says. <laughs> it's um, magic. Did they just use this on everything from like, we're making burgers, we're doing steak, we're doing pork chops, whatever it was? We're seasoning it with Lowry's. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's the seasoning. Um, okay, have you, and it's two tablespoons of Lowry's. Of the Lowry's, yep. Has your mom had your kicking chicken? She has, yeah. What does she think? Uh, she's into it. She loves, she loves how crispy I can get my chicken, and that it really has nothing to do with my recipe. But You're like, that's not what I've been perfecting. That's her high, I'm like, mom, but how does it taste? She's like, it's great, you know. But it's such a mom answer, right? I was gonna say, is she the kind of mom that's like cheering you on no matter what? It really doesn't matter. She always told me I can do it as long as I put my mind to it. Come on, mom. Yeah. I saw her recently, right? Yeah, I just saw her on Monday. She's doing great. Did you tell her you're gonna be teaching the world how to make your cake and chicken? Is she impressed? I did. I, well, I've been telling the entire world. I I think I even earlier this week might have got up on top of the building and shouted it. I love it. <laughs> right? I love it. I mean, this um, is so crazy. you can blend that that whole blend, blend that on up. 
get that all nice and together. Sometimes that brown sugar does like to clump, so you kind of got to work it a little bit. I was tossing it with a spoon and then I was like, I feel something in there. Okay, got it. I got my spice blend going. All right, and then you can throw about half of that into your marinade mix. Got it. Ooh, this is gonna be real. So half, so I'm half in the marinade and half I'm saving for later. For later on, yep. Yeah, big clubs. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to oh, spill yeah. the counter, it looks so good. Okay, got it. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so now it's time to bring that chicken, throw that chicken on in there. And all I'm doing is just like submerging it. Yeah, let it, uh, but you want to make sure that all of it is fully submerged in okay, the buttermilk mix. <laughs> One did a little cannonball in here. I'm going to have to clean that up later. Got it. And then what do you do like when this, with this marinade, well, maybe I'll ask you when we get to that. I'll be quiet, how about that? How did you know that kicking chicken was the thing you were gonna chase after for three years? Uh, well, it's honestly my first recipe that I've ever worked on. And I've always been told that I make great chicken, but you know, everyone kind of makes great chicken. So I thought, how can I make it my own? And you know, the with the growing popularity of the hot chicken thing I wanted to do my take on it and so I knew that uh, if I wanted to do it my way I was going to have to introduce a new type of flavor profile when it came to the hot chicken right so that's why it took a little bit of time Christina but now I think we're ready to go okay have you ever had a hot chicken in Nashville not in Nashville no this is what I'm saying. And what's funny is the first time we had that conversation, you asked me the same exact question. Three years ago. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, you know, I'm so curious, like, it's so, it's so fun when, you, when you're with someone who has, like, had this creative pursuit for so long. It's just always so interesting to me, like, why? Why this thing? And then what's, not what's your baseline, just, like, what do you know about the way other people know of it come have right. come to it or expect it just because it's sort of like is it can like it's it's more conceptually in your head in this really beautiful brilliant way but you've worked in kitchens right. for a really long time milk bar is not your first rodeo right i've i've been in the kitchens for a few years um but you know i think that there's also something great about me never having the nashville hot chicken right because now we have ashen's chicken chicken it doesn't really take that label right it's our own thing and yeah, so i think I, that there's something that's beautiful. What I think is so fun and brilliant about it right it's you're not trying to live up to something that has that that you've had before right like it's not imitation you're really blazing your own trail with this recipe which i think is super right. Absolutely, and, I, and now we're sharing this with the bait club. How amazing, this is awesome. Uh, okay, so how long does this situation marinate? Minimum 30 minutes. Okay. If you can do longer, do longer. Okay. But, I mean, 30 minutes minimum. You wanna get a, at least a little bit of that flavor. We worked so hard on, on marinating it. Um, so at least at least 30 minutes for it to really penetrate that meat. What's your max? Like, would you ever marinate overnight? I've never marinated overnight. Max four hours. Um, then it, it starts to get, it starts to really take on that hot sauce. Yeah, flavor. my question is like, how hot, how kicking does this chicken get? Overnight? Yeah, if you marinated it overnight, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to kick. You, you yeah. might have to for breakfast. Absolutely. <laughs> and do you like to marinate it at room temperature or do you stick it in the fridge? No, I, I usually throw this entire mix into the fridge and while this is marinating is when we, uh, you know, work on our other things. Okay, I'm going in. Okay, what other stuff are we working on? All right, we still have slaw to make, okay? We gotta make our coleslaw, we still gotta make our spicy aioli because a sandwich just isn't a sandwich. 
fish that doesn't have an aioli. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's it's a kicking chicken sandwich. So it's kicking chicken that is marinating right now, and then other things are gonna happen that will be revealed to us. Um, on a delicious bun with a with a aioli and a slaw. Yep. So it's like crunchy, smooth, textural, bitter, sweet, salty, spicy. A little bit of cake. Absolutely. It's like ping pong and all over the place. All over the place, which makes for such a fun bite. Oh my god. Okay. So it's slaw time or it's aioli time? Let's do the slaw first. Okay, I'm ready. So I have already shredded my cabbage with carrots. I bought my cabbage now, shredded. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with buying shredded it's cabbage. Board, but it's just about, you know? And a lot of people don't have food processors at home and things like that. So, you know, I, I, I mean, I wrote this recipe with the pre-packed cabbage in mind. Oh, but, okay. Uh, good. I'm forgiven then. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Look, you have a mixture of um of like reggie cabbage, like green cabbage and red cabbage. Yep, yeah, give it a little color. I'm going all color. Okay. It's beautiful. It's gonna look amazing, I promise you. Okay, how much cabbage, how much shredded cabbage are we doing? So we're going to do um one and a half cups of the cabbage. Got it. I'm gonna eye it because that just feels right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I mean, isn't that what we do? You know, when we're sitting at home. That's what's so fascinating to me about this recipe for you because it is such a savory mentality to sort of, you know, when you're cooking at home, you're seasoning to taste, you're feeling certain ways. And um, this idea that you've been so finite after this recipe for three years is also re like really, really, really fun to think of because it's different than the way people are like, yeah, I'm always working on my burger recipe, but you know, I just throw some stuff in and see what happens. Right. And so that's kind of another thing that took so long because I'm so used to a pinch of this and a splash of this and you're right. <laughs> so it was, it was the fine tune. Okay. Talk <laughs> to me. What else happens with this red cabbage? So we have our cabbage. Um, might have some carrots, maybe right. have some shredded carrots. So throw some of those in there. And um, also, if you have uh, some shredded pineapple around, awesome. You know, love like the only thing in my fridge is marinating kicking chicken and bubbly water and like slices of cheese and some like maybe all the condiments, obviously, of course. Right. I live like I am a college student. <laughs> and my and like my uh honestly like my kitchen is full of like deli cups and stuff you know from the kitchen so, so like, the nights from working in restaurants absolutely so um like i don't know we use these for drinking cups for mixing cups for right so everything everything um so now we kind of have like a draw a dry medley right but we also still kind of got to get our wet together so we have a qp mayo got it. or whatever mayo you may have at home i like the qp qp mayo is a very delicious japanese mayo uh that is like how would you describe it it's definitely nowhere near as sweet as helmet as a um, mirror right. Um, it's like a mild sweet, but the tang of it, it, it just kind of, it, it hits. And the way that it sits on your tongue, it's light. It's not heavy like regular mayo. That's or actually really well put. It's not as heavy. It's almost like not as eggy. It's more smooth than it is gelatin. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which kind of makes for a beautiful slaw. And you don't want really want that. Uh, we're all we're already doing a, a aioli also so you know um, my this is my hellman's mayo which ash i'm gonna keep it real for a second i was raised by crazy women that love miracle whip and so like oh, in my ideal refrigerator lives miracle whip only there's no way the person that I share this refrigerator with, would, if I brought home Miracle Whip, you would. <laughs> what is this? 
<laughs> like it would be gone in, in a heartbeat. And so I have become okay with Hellman's, but now I think I might just, just start taking QP. I think maybe that's our common ground with mayo. Yeah, that is, I feel like that would be your common ground, the QP. Okay, Absolutely. how much mayo goes in here? Um, you're gonna do about a half a cup. Okay. Got it. All right. And then we're gonna do a one and a half teaspoons of vinegar. Any, any kind of vinegar? Yeah, I use uh, apple cider or champagne. Oh, perfect. I got apple cider. Something oh. that's like neutral and bitter, but no, we're not going like balsamic, sherry vibes. Right, exactly. One and a half teaspoons. It's still, it's a very vinegar heavy recipe. Um, there's, you know, acidic also, but. We need to cut the heat. We need it, exactly. <laughs> like its own superpower to cut to to be able to battle the kicking chicken absolutely um if you have your pineapple juice yes and we'll do uh one and a half uh, tablespoon sorry of the pineapple juice i like that you're bringing the sweetness into the slaw yes it that's kind of our our mild common ground between our hot chicken breast you know the sweetness the sweetness. I like the sweetness and, has a role here. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I, I throw a teaspoon of, of pepper, black pepper. Oh, got it. Black pepper. Teaspoon of brown sugar. There's the brown sugar. There it is. It's so smart. Most people don't realize that in savory cooking, you know, you know from obviously being in the kitchen at Milk Bar, but most people don't realize that in savory cooking, much like in on the sweet side of things, we're always trying to find balance and we usually use salt and sometimes acid or pepper to sort of find that balance. Not that you ever know that it's there, but to help kind of balance the scales. Most people don't know that in savory cooking, there's not a lot of sugar, but that sugar exists. That sugar, yeah, does sugar definitely exists. And, you know, it kind of takes a different flavor profile once it's cooked down. Yes, it's sweet, but kind of tastes a little bit different, right, than just regular raw sugar. It gives it some, like, ground to stand on. Right. Um, so for me personally, I like to get right in there with my hands. Oh, my God, I love you for that. Wait, to, does to, the fresh pineapple go in the slaw, too? The pineapple goes in the slaw, yes. Okay. Sorry, did I miss that? Oh, no, you might have said it, but I might have just been way too excited about all the about mayonnaise. About talking yeah. very deeply about mayonnaise. <laughs> right, you're getting in the mix. Okay, here we go. Take take us home. So it's just toss, 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 toss. Oh yeah. And um toss like, it around. I'm, I'm a, a I, for me to get it really you know married, I, I like to get right in there with my hands. It, it just, it, you know, we can fold with spatulas all we want, but it's yeah, something it's, about there's it. something about like the structure of the slaw, of the cabbage rather, like the mayonnaise doesn't break up without the hand, right? Otherwise, you without just hand. Make pockets of mayo without it. Oh my gosh. First of all, the pineapple in this slaw smells incredible. It you takes it to another place, right? It. Yeah, it's like a, it's almost like a savory pineapple in a really lovely way. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. How long did you work on this slaw, Ash? Well, the, I took essence from my mother's slaw recipe. And then I kind of just, really, I just incorporated pineapple. Okay. Yep. So a few fun facts for Bait Club. So Ash's mom and dad, uh, are they from LA or did they just live in LA before they- No, they were, they were born and raised in Long Beach. In Long Beach, okay. Yep. They're both musicians. Um, Ash's mom was a Motown singer on Sunset, not too far, Sunset? Yep, no. right on Sunset in the old Motown building. Yep. Not too far from Milk Bar, which I just freaking love. His dad, also a musician. Um, yep. You're an only child, so you have, I think, one of the most fun, like, relationships with them. And I love that this is based on your mom's flowers. 
Yeah, I had to incorporate a little bit of mom. Wait, did she know, like, when you fed her the cake and chicken, was she like, Ash, I see you, that's my... Just a little familiar. Yeah, she called me out. <laughs> um, so your mom's been an inspiration, but they've both been an inspiration because you're not just an amazing cook and amazing teammate at Milk Bar. You are also an incredible musician, which, by the way, Bay Club just saying you're trying to get after the weekly playlist because there's a lot of Ash, a lot of Ash's work on it. It's also playing in my background just to kind of like get into oh, your, yeah. get in, get in and get out. With <laughs> you. Awesome. Oh, uh, let's, let's just say like also, <laughs> let's just say also like, how awesome is it that we can just sit in the kitchen, throw on some tunes, you know, whip up some slaw, whip up some chicken sandwiches for the family. And I think this is a really fun recipe for that. We're bringing it all together. I like that you were oh, yeah. for me to talk about you and your things. Oh yeah, Most always. human also, in case you couldn't tell Bay Club. I was like, if you don't put <laughs> your music on the playlist this week, I am. And so you can either make it hard for yourself or easy for yourself. <laughs> you gotta listen you're gonna listen right oh so, um, so now we have our slaw it's ready to go we can set that aside if your fridge is close to you go okay. ahead and just throw it in there and let it chill okay. and we also have a spicy aioli that needs to get whipped up Okay. And this is, if you're a saucy person you might throw a lot on your sandwich if you're you know, if you just want a little bit of flavor, but gotta have a little bit of your spicy aioli on the sandwich. Okay, talk me through. What's in the aioli? We'll, we'll whip it up quick, and then we'll f and then we'll bread the chicky. Yep. Okay, great. Talk so, to me. um, yeah. So we got <laughs> we have our uh, mayo, our QP mayo. Again, it's back. We're gonna take a cup of that. Got it. We're gonna um, incorporate some sriracha. Ooh, why sriracha? I like to use this. I couldn't tell you, I just love sriracha. My girlfriend, it drives my girlfriend crazy. I put it on everything. Uh, ditto with my partner in crime. It is, it's a different kind of heat, right? It's a different kind of heat, yeah. I don't know how they did it, but they killed it. They killed it. <laughs> so, how much sriracha goes into this? About a half cup. Okay. It has a different kind of peppery vibe to it, for sure. For sure. And I think that it's, it's another way that we can incorporate the heat without being super harsh with cayenne pepper. Got it. And if people don't have sriracha at home, would you recommend like their favorite, their favorite condiment that's not like their favorite hot sauce, but just temper it, like kind of taste it as they go. Right. It's not necessarily- or, I mean, you can even just take your Frank's hot sauce and just throw your Frank's hot bag in there. Got if it. you still have some left, or maybe you might've bought a small bottle just for the recipe. If you still have some left over, go ahead and use that. Frank's a good stand-in. Absolutely. Okay, cool. What and else then let's there? throw some lemon juice, a tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay. I like this. This is going to be super bitter and acidic in the same ways, right? You're kind of right. like using the same play, but you're using different ingredients to do the work with each element. Exactly, exactly. Which ultimately, it, it, it doesn't give you a very harsh flavor on one end of the spectrum or the other. Got it. Okay, I got my lemon juice. Nice. And then uh, I like to throw another tablespoon of cayenne just to kick it up. It's very optional, but I like to kick it up a little bit. <laughs> it's very optional. It's very optional. It's, it's, it really comes down to how hot you like things. And then a pinch of salt for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and then this baby goes to the side because we're going to chicken town. We're moving on to chicken. I love it. I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh my god, this looks really good. Okay. I'm ready. 
I did my homework okay. and pre marinated some chicken anyway, so you're in luck. Awesome. So it's I did the same. <laughs> so we have our marinated chicken. Okay. And we also have our breading that we're going to have to do. So we have our cornflakes that are going to go into. You got your cornflakes all ready to go. So um, I like to crush them up by hand. Give them a nice crush. Yep, crunch them on up. You don't really want to have too big of cornflake chunks on your chicken. Okay. All right. Now how, uh, so we, how fine or not fine do I want these cornflakes? I crunch it up. It's, it's pretty fine, to be quite honest with you. I, that's also why I use the hand. I used to just use the bottom of a deli cup, but I found that, once again, getting in there with your hands, it just, there's nothing like it. I like this. And why cornflakes? It's, it's the crunchiest. It's the crispiest. I promise. Your mom loves best about it. Right. I mean, my mom used cornflakes, you know, it was one of those things that we always had at home. And, you know, she always incorporated it into her breading. And, you know, later on, I realized that there's only one way to get your breading just like mom's. You got to do it just like mom. You got to do it just like most, most answers to life, even though we resist it for so long, most of it is like what mom does, what mom said to do. That's the Absolutely. Answer. 100%. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. My cornflakes are ground. All right, now let's throw in some flour. Okay. I use all-purpose flour. And how and much I, flour to cornflakes are we are we talking? I do a cup for every two cups of cornflakes is a cup of flour. Okay, got it. And why the mixture of the two? This is gonna help it. Uh, really coat and stick to the chicken. So when we just do cornflakes alone, uh, it, it tends to fall off during the cook-off. Uh, and so that, that flour really just kind of keeps everything together. Well, this is also like, it's striking me how efficient and intelligent this recipe is because normally when you're gonna bread, bread like a chicken cutlet, you have your chicken, you season it. Maybe you marinate it, you season it, whatever. Then you have, then you like flour it, season flour it, then you dunk it into eggs, then you dunk it into maybe flour or some sort of breadcrumb. And we already have the eggs in the marinade to make it sticky. And then we have this mixture that already has both the inner coating, that flour dredge, and the outer crispies of the cornflakes. Absolutely. You're brilliant. That's basically what 100%. I'm telling you. You must receive this compliment. You are brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate that. You have no idea. I'm hearing this from Christina Tosi herself. Yes. That is insane. <laughs> You're brilliant, Ash. Okay, this that music is, is kicking as well, by the way. I'm sorry? This music is kicking as well, by I'm the way. So, I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. I'm over here like, I'm like, I don't know if anyone else can hear the music, but I'm already kind of like, I'm moving I to- I see you bobbing over there. Oh, like, yeah. It's great. Okay. Talk to me. I got my dredge down. Okay. Let's do a tablespoon of black pepper. Okay. We'll do a little bit of salt. Give it a pinch. Got it. And then let's throw uh, about, I'd say, another half of that everywhere mixture that we did. There it is. Yep. So we're going to throw more of that. Let's do about half of that. Save a little bit for the end, but we're gonna save about half of it. Yep. Okay. All right. So I got I got some left for the end still. Nice. Okay. okay, I see what's happening here. Yes, is what I have to say. Oh yeah. Wow. And you see, it starts to take on a little bit of color, right? It starts yes. to look a little. Oh yeah. Now we're kicking. I mean, I'm very, I'm, I, my silence is basically sheer enthusiasm of what else I can use this dredgy flour recipe for because I'm very excited. 
Awesome. I can't wait to see that. Okay. So once we have this going, now we're ready to bread our chicken. Okay. Now I use a, a wire rack here. Got it. A wire lamp, wire line sheet pan. Excuse okay. me. I'm gonna make a little. I, I ran out of bowls that are big enough for my <laughs> my <laughs> butterfly chicken breast, so I'm just gonna put my little like most delicious cornflake flour dredge on one and then I'm gonna use the other one for the landing spot. No problem, no okay. problem. So um, for this step, I like to be very strategic and use a wet hand and a dry hand. So only wet one hand. Wet hand, hand, dry hand. Wet yep. hand, dry hand. Wet hand, dry hand. <laughs> you don't, it, okay. you know, it's gonna start getting cakey on your fingers. You're, you're not gonna be too stuck when it's on both hands. Okay. So. <laughs> You take your wet hand and, and you and grab your breast. We're going to throw it into our mixture here. Now, I like to cover it with my dry hand. This is actually something that they don't like. No one ever writes it on a recipe. No one ever really teaches you. You just have to learn by like soggy error normally, right? Right. I'm talking so, so low worded. Absolutely. Okay. So we so, so like to coat it, like basically just totally cover it. Like you're burying it in your seasoned flour cornflake sand. Absolutely. Now you can stop right here, but if you want extra crispy, grab it with your wet hand again. No. Dunk her back in there. We call it the double dredge. Okay, double dredge. I'm out here. I'm here. I'm out oh, yeah. here. Oh, oh yeah. This is going to give you the. Picks it up. Uh huh. And goes again. Oh my God. Okay, got it. Okay, now, I'm, now I see what. Your mom didn't just say it was crispy and she liked it. That was a legit compliment. It, yeah, we like our chicken crispy. I like crispiness. It's such a good bite when it's nice and crispy. Okay, so then wet hand stays over here and dry hand goes to cover again. Yep, and then just throw it on your uh, sheet tray. And then we're gonna keep doing that for our four chicken breasts that we have going. Oh my God. And then in the meantime, our oil is heating up to, it's, it's same oil rules apply, Bake Club. It's a deep pot. You fill it no more than half of the way with oil. Nothing watery is allowed anywhere near it, and you keep your eye on it. Absolutely, absolutely. It. And at this point, you're not using used oil unless it was used oil from the last time you made kicking chicken. Unless absolutely. you use oil that tastes like, unless you want your kicking chicken to taste like funnel cake, which I'm not saying would be a bad thing, but it would be different. It would be different. Um, but if you do do that, um, please let me know how it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the next evolution. That could be year 4.0 for a kick and chicken. Okay, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> Dude, this thing is mondo. I'm sorry? My double breaded chicken breast is out of control. Oh, yeah. And they fry off beautifully. You know, I think that the double dredge is really the key to that crispy chicken, to be mm -hmm. quite honest with you. Double dredge. Have you tried other cereals, Ash? I have tried to use um, Rice Krispies. Oh, interesting. To, to no avail. That to did not work. work. Not the same. That did not work. No, it's not Heart the same. Because it's not broke, you know? I mean, it's right, like cereal, exactly. right? You're like, there's nothing wrong with it. There's only there's nothing wrong with it. You know, let's not reinvent the wheel. My mom, my mom did it for a reason. There you go. You know, it's mustard. just like mustard in the in the fish breading. Uh, that's her move. Yes, yes. So yes. that is another. I'm I'm just giving the gems to bait club I, today. You better start charging up more of a fee, my friend. Uh -oh. Well, here's my other question. 
did you fall in love with food because of mom? I know you fell in love with music because of mom and dad. In kind of to be quite honest with you, it was really my grandmother and cooking with grandma when I would go and visit Sunday mornings and making breakfast and and just, you know, getting my hands in there and, and helping her out. Um, you know, when I was younger, uh, you know, there was a time where it, I maybe didn't um, understand like how much of a, a monumental moment I was having <laughs> but later on I really grew to appreciate just you know in the kitchen and having those conversations with my grandma you know that's something that I would never trade I love that that's I don't know if I've ever told you but that's like one of the biggest impressions that I ever had for baking like one of the reasons one of the biggest like most like deeply soulful reasons I do what I do is because the way that I kind of put it is like in growing up, of all the different things you feel growing up, like you're always maybe looking for a place of like safety and security and belonging. And you're trying to figure out how you fit in the world and blah, 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 blah. And for some reason, I think because my grandmas were in the kitchen and they weren't like the easiest grandmas, one was like really tough. Uh, but I always knew I was welcome in the kitchen. And so there's something about, and kitchens are hard places, like they're not easy places, but oh, there's, no. something about the, yeah, there's something about the kitchen early on. Like I, I share that with you for sure of the like, yeah. I'm here because of my grandma. I'm here because of my grandma, 100%. And, and like, I wouldn't be here without it, to be quite honest. <laughs> there's no way. Okay, I got my double dredged kicking chicken, and I can tell by the by the smell. You know how you can smell when oil is close to three fifty. It's like we're ready to go. It's a baby oh, yeah. in the air. I'm ready. All right, sweet. I'm gonna wash my hands, and then we're gonna fry these off. Okay, get it. I have one that's the size of my face. I can smell it. I know my, my oil is ready to go. I don't know about you. Okay, hold on. I'm going to move you over to my oil. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're on a filter. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we're in a secret quarters. Okay. <laughs> Deep breaths. All right. So I am cooking on an in, in, induction or convection today. Most people are cooking, you know, they ha usually have like the flame to be quite honest. I love the flame a whole lot more. It's easy for me to gauge. But when you're at home, let's just do low to medium and make sure that our oil is at 350. That's really like the most important thing. So you just don't want to cook it too fast. Okay, I got it. So you want, you want medium, like what oil temperature are we talking? It's, it's a low to medium heat. Okay, got it. Got it. Because you don't want the outside to crisp before the inside is cooked. It's cooked, right. And also because we have like brown sugar and, and things like that, those things get dark very fast and it can make your chicken look a bit unappealing. So you kind of want to take the, you want to take the slow road. Okay, got it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so medium to low heat, and maybe your first one is like your tester. Absolutely. I mean, or it's your Sammy, and maybe it's not the Sammy you serve everyone else. Right, you gotta make your own, right, <laughs> on the side. So uh, I usually have tongs with me. Okay. I don't have any metal tongs, but I have found three clean, dry metal objects that I'm gonna use in equal parts. These are gonna be my secret weapons to Removing my kicking chicken from the oil. It'll work. It'll work. <laughs> <laughs>
I also have another um, rack line uh, sheet spray. Yeah. This is perfect. what I and it, that, it, It's perfect, I promise. <laughs> uh, really, when you throw it on to something like this and it's sitting for a little bit, is how you're going to keep that crispiness 360 around. Once it sits on something kind of flat, like that, you're gonna kind of get a soggy under underbelly. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, there we go. That's it. Now that's it right there. You're not the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Okay, so let's take our tester piece here. We'll shake, we can shake a little bit of that excess off if, the, if it's not stuck. And throw it on in there. This is exciting, Ash. Oh, this yeah. is kind of a oh, moment yeah. for me. This is your three <laughs> years in kicking chicken. It's I know. before my eyes. I was like, elated. <laughs> this is like such a amazing moment for me and I'm sharing it with big clubs and awesome. It's real Ash. Okay, how do you know when to flip it? I think my oil might be a little too hot. Okay, then you crank it down a little bit. The chicken will let you know. If you're starting to see a whole lot going on around your chicken too early, bring that heat down a little bit. Okay, got it. Here's what I got. Let me get you guys. Yep, so let's bring that heat down a little bit. You're, you're, you're flying right now. I'm flying. <laughs> you know me, I'm always, I'm always on the go, but this is a little too fast. A little, just a little. And your top will kind of let you know that your bottom is ready to flip. It'll start to, to brown. Okay. A little bit. And then we're and then we're gonna flip it. One thing that we don't want to do though, here's another trick, we don't wanna flip too much. That's when we start to lose our breading. That's actually a really good call. That's like pan frying 101, one wet hand, dry hand. And then the other is the more you touch it, the more breading you lose, right? The more you lose, absolutely. I think I might have freaked out about the oil temperature. It looks really good. <laughs> Just wanna say. But I have my, my most beautiful piece of chicken waiting next. Nice. Yeah, I got this one is going right now. I'm about to flip here. And now we're sitting on the other side. So, yeah, when you if you flip too early, you might lose some breading. Um, one thing that I do like to do sometimes is just kind of let it sit a little bit. And just stick on the chicken, you know, if you want to throw your aioli together while you're letting that kind of sit for a second like go ahead and do that and that's also going to save your bread in. because like the seasoning and the flour that you mix with the corn flakes will sort of penetrate down into that sticky marinade and form that a nice shell and that's all for good absolutely okay got it how long would you say you could let the breading sit like if you wanted to bread so you'd marinate, you could either marinate, walk away, hang out, go watch, whatever. Go do a bunch of push-ups. Sure. Go watch a TV show. <laughs> go read a great book. Go listen to Ash's music on Spotify. Or you could start to make your slaw and stuff like that. But how long can you let your chicken bread, your breaded chicken sit before it goes into the fryer? 10, 10 15 minutes is good. Throw it in your fridge and just let it chill for a little bit. Let it hang. Okay. Yeah. I totally get why your mom complimented you on the crispiness of this. I highly underestimated how crispy this was going to be. Oh, yeah. I go for crispy. I like crispy, crispy bites. And, you know, uh, by now, it should start to smell pretty good. It's kicking over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's kicking over here. 
Oh my gosh. What is your current obsession? Is it still kicking chicken or have you moved on to a different recipe? I have moved on to a different recipe. I can't believe we waited this long to have this conversation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So I'm working on, I'm working on a whole new recipe. I'm working That's on a, and what's ironic is it's a cookie recipe. No! What kind of cookie? I'm trying to do like a ube, which is oh, a like Filipino. Oh, yeah, potato? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what do you want the spirit of the cookie to be? Is it fudgy? Is it like more like a whoopie pie? Is it buttery? Is it crispy? I want the, I want the soft top bite, but the crispy underlying buttery crisp, that, that type of bite. Got it. Yeah, um, so my girlfriend is a baker. She's been baking her whole life, and she's helping me kind of come up with this idea, come up with the concept, and hopefully we can move forward with this, you know? Wait, is this a JV? This is a joint venture between the two of you. This is a joint venture between us, yep. And how much does she get to speak? How much did she get to speak into the cake and chicken recipe? She was with me 100%, like every step of the way. I mean, it's it, from the slaw to the aioli, everything, it, babe, try this, babe, can you try this, babe, try this. So, quite honestly, kicking chicken is not on the top of her uh, dinner choices right now, but, you know, it's okay, it's okay, we'll get there. So it'll be the ube cookie. Oh, I'm very excited to hear how this goes. Yep, I'm working on it, and I mean, I just wanted to try something different. I've never like done the whole the baking thing. I've always been a savory person. Yes. You know, one hundred percent. So, you know, tapping into that world and I keep having these my girlfriend's Filipino, so I keep having these ube inspired desserts. And and I was like, I wonder how good this would be with like a crispy cookie with some white chocolate chips, maybe some macadamia nuts. 100%. I've also had in Hawaii, the way that you can get a deep fried apple pie um, on the mainland. In Hawaii, you can get a deep fried apple pie from McDonald's, but you can also get a deep fried ube pie and ash. It is, it translates. It is very Whoa. good. Okay, this is what my, right. my tester kick and chicken looks like. That's looking, that's looking mighty good. Um, so yeah, what's great about cooking with breasts is they will let you know when they're done. You just give it a, a nice little uh, tap on the top. If you get that resistance back from your chicken, oh, yeah. it's, usually, it's pretty ready. Got it. And, and it's fine to, if, if you want to, you know, take it out because quite honestly, we're still cooking chicken. That, that grease, everything, it's hot, and it's going to let it still, it's still cooking. Even it's though you took it out, it's still cooking a little bit, and right. it's going to get you to that, that perfect spot, I promise you. Nice and juicy. Look at it. You heard it from him first. And then, and then chicken assembly is like bread, aioli, um, small cheese. You could do cheese. I am lactose intolerant, but... <laughs> But it's your absolutely, sandwich. absolutely. Whatever. You can definitely throw some sandwich on there. It's your you sandwich. You do aioli on both sides of the bun and then slaw on top or slaw on the bottom? I like to put my slaw on the top, but it's an, also another preference thing. It's okay. a preference, you know, okay. uh, but my bite, my bite is aioli, pickles, slaw, chicken, aioli. Aioli, pickles, obviously slaw and pickle so that you get the pickle juice and the slaw juice and the aioli like when you take a bite it it seeps down it's coming it. down oh yeah oh yeah all right ash i'm gonna keep frying this chicken i know you're frying yours we're gonna do yep. some um, chicken sammy assembly and i'm gonna yep. i'm gonna text you pictures of what i come up with and you can grade them and rate them i That's literally great. cannot wait it's gonna I be good. Okay, Big Club, can you please shout it out for this incredible human who has given us three years of his kick and chicken brilliance? 
We will come back on to do some ube cookie brilliance as well. Maybe we get maybe yeah. we get a guest appearance. Maybe it's a duo. Um, we learned so much about the beauty and the power of mothers and the good that they bring into our worlds about savoring every moment that we have with grandmas and the power and the resilience that they instill on us in these beautiful ways and i think oh, yeah. leading unapologetically with your heart ash is like perhaps one of my favorite maybe my favorite thing about you that you are willing to go so deep to chase after something so important like this cake and chicken sandwich for three years is just like I love, what did you say that, you're, that your mom taught you? You just set your mind to it and you, you keep can, going. You can do it as long as you put your mind to it. Oh, and you'll know when you get there. Just like you'll know when the chicken breast is done. Absolutely. Give it a little poke, it'll let you know. 100%. Ash, I miss you. I'll talk to you soon. I can't wait for you to grade my kick and chicken. I hope I live up to your kick oh, yeah. and chicken. I'm sure it's an A+. Plus. I'm going to fry these up and um, serve up some teammates here at the, at the comp. I love it. Send me pictures. Absolutely. You already know. I'll talk to you. Bye, Ash. Thank you. Take care.